Hey, here we go with another edition of the Fat Guy Podcast. I'm the Fat Guy. Most people just call me Brett. Uh, This uh, podcast comes in a time of great uh, national and international consternation as we deal with the coronavirus and the COVID-19 disease. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about fasting, the ketogenic diet, and COVID-19. Quick disclaimer, not a doctor, have no formal medical training. However, I do tons of research. I do have opinions about things, but you should in no way take anything I say as being medical advice for you. You should always consult with a medical professional, okay? Thanks so much to my patrons. My patron supporters are just a phenomenal. They uh, chunk me a few bucks a month um, you know, to help... Uh, support the podcast and help me support the price of hosting angie richardson hannah DeMello, eric barnhart cindy carr bessie williams kenneth wilkerson bobby houston thank you guys so much if you want to consider being a patron uh here's what you get you get patron only podcasts As a matter of fact i just did one for patrons only um they'll be listening to that and it's exclusive for them you get that um you get commercial-free, ad-free, trimmed-down versions of this podcast that the general public gets without all the fluff and garbage. And you get a first chance up to uh, hit me up if you have questions. So uh, you can go to losewithmason.com if you want to check that out, see what the perks are, losewithmason.com. Thank you so much. Let's get right into it. So... um COVID-19 is the disease that comes as a result of being affected with the uh, this new strand of the coronavirus. Coronavirus isn't anything new, okay? Coronavirus has been around. If you've heard of SARS, if you've heard of MERS, you know, all of this is different uh, incarnations of coronavirus, okay? This isn't something somebody invented in a lab somewhere. There isn't some grand conspiracy. This is just uh, mutation, adaptation, I don't, I don't know the exact word, um, evolution uh, of, a, of a virus that we already know about, okay? Um, COVID-19 is the disease as a result of contracting and being affected with this uh, particular strain of the coronavirus, and um, it is quite nasty. Um, I hate to be the person that spreads the bad news, but even the people who survive this, if you if you require hospitalization, you go through hell. Um, you see these doctors talking about the scans they're doing of the lungs and how they've seen nothing like it. It is a grinder. Um, these people are going through hell. And those are the ones that, that are hospitalized and survive it. And then you have the numbers of the people who died, this horrible gasping for air horrible death and so it's nothing to be sure sure there's a a, a a big percentage of people who are asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms um but you're rolling the dice you don't know which one you're going to be but we'll talk about some of the things we do know about who is and who isn't okay so let's get into it so what do we know people with type 2 diabetes people with high blood pressure people who are obese people who have coronary artery disease these people are all dying from uh covid19 at a, an exponentially higher rate, depending on the comorbidity listed, or if it's multiple comorbidities, it's 80% of them that contract it die. So it's huge. It's just huge. And so, look, America, most of America has type 2 diabetes and is obese, and so we're all at risk if we contracted it. You, you, you know, you're all, it's, it, it's a toss-up. You know? I remember, um, I remember when country music singer Joe Diffie, who I love immensely, announced on a Friday. He announced on a Friday that he had coronavirus. And if you've if you'd seen Joe Diffie any time in the last, you know, five years, dude is huge and bloated like a fish. It's so obvious that he has type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, um, just major problems going on in his body. And um I was very saddened, but not surprised to hear that he died a couple of days later. It's, um, you know, it's just not kind to people who have these comorbidities. So, 
uh, without getting too medically off into things, because I'm not a medical expert, I've done limited uh, study on this, I'll be honest with you, but I have looked into the cytokine storm, which is apparently one of the major contributing factors to uh, mortality rates. And so this is something that stems from when you have pre-existing conditions and primarily inflammation of the such. You have type 2 diabetes, you know, this insulin resistance. You have these issues going on in your body with the high, that's led to the high blood pressure. <clears throat> All this is uh, greatly impacted and instigated by uh, inflammation. And so you have this uh, cytokine response, right? Well, you have this cytokine response trying its best to deal with the issues you already have, and then you contract um, this virus and you have COVID-19. Then you have this double, triple, quadruple, or whatever overreaction of a cytokine response to try to deal with that infection as well. And you get something called cytokine storm, which uh, leads to death. And so the number one thing that you could do to help yourself, in my opinion, is not have, uh, uh, or rather have the lowest um, everyday run-of-the-mill cytokine response as possible due to inflammation. And so a ketogenic diet's a big, uh, a big contributor to that. Um, it's well known and well documented that uh, processed carbohydrates leads to a huge inflammatory effect. I've witnessed this in my own life, and anybody that's done keto has seen this. After you've been keto a week or two, man, you find your joints don't hurt anymore, your knees bend right, you don't have these aches and pains, you don't have the puffiness, the bloatedness goes away. I mean, all this in inflammatory stuff just goes away. <clears throat> so a ketogenic diet, especially a well-formulated one, is not only uh, low inflammatory, but it's also healthy for you, which could help your immune system. So... When I mean keto, I don't mean selling a product and slapping the word keto on it, which we knew would happen once the word got out about how effective a ketogenic diet was. I prefer to rather call it an actual real food minimal carb diet. And so I don't like calling it keto because you can eat a lot of crap and call it keto. I'm talking about eating steak, beef, some bacon, eggs, butter, lean, greasy vegetables, and um, some cheese, some small amounts of real cheese, not highly processed cheese, but real cheese. And that's pretty much it. That's the ketogenic diet. It's kind of plain, it's kind of boring, but it's satisfying, and it's very low inflammatory, and it's very nutritious. Beef is very, very nutritious, as are your uh, leafy greens. So that's going to give your body the raw materials it needs to assist with your immune system to help keep it strong. And it's going to help keep the inflammation at low levels so you don't have this daily persistent cytokine response that can become super aggravated if you contract the virus. So what about fasting? Um, fasting <clears throat> is actually great when you have bacterial infections. But it's not amazing for viral infections. And of course, that's what the coronavirus is. It's, it's a virus. It's a viral infection. So fasting is not going to be greatly beneficial in terms of, you know, some kind of a lengthy fast or whatever. However, putting distance between meals is good in that it does help boost the immune system if you keep it uh, no longer than 36 hours. And I'd say the sweet spot would be around 24 hours would be one of, would probably be, want to be around the max you'd want to do. You could push it to 36. Um, but somewhere in the one meal a day range, it's probably going to optimize you for peak immune, immune, immunity, boosting your immune system. That combined with a, you know, a high quality, nutritious, uh, low carb, real food meal plan is going to give you your best chance at having a high immune system. So sure you can do fasting, but it needs to be reasonable, right? You're not wanting to do two, three days like that, like we've normally done. You don't want to do that for this, especially not trying to prevent it. And especially not if you already have it. No. Of course, once you contract it, a lot of what you eat is just going to be determined by what you're, when you're able to eat based on what the disease lets you do or whatever. But that's where we find ourselves. So fasting, OMAD or less is best. You know, 16-8 is fine. 18-6 is fine. 20-4 and 4 is fine. OMAD, one meal a day is fine. 
And on the upper, upper, upper end, the uh, alternate day diet, which which takes you to 36 hours, is, is, is about the max you could even consider. Keep the inflammatory foods low. You want to keep it in the ketogenic low-carb range, you know, 20, 25, 30 grams of carbs at most. Make sure your food is real. You want to eat beef. You got bacon, of course, but you want to primarily center your diet around beef, which is highly nutritious. Leafy greens, butters, eggs. Eggs are highly nutritious. And uh, some cheeses, but uh, don't get crazy with the cheese. Okay. Above all of that, folks, isolate. Isolate yourself as much as you can, as often as you can, for as long as you can. If you do have to go buy groceries, buy groceries for as long as you can buy them for. At least once a whole week's worth, and preferably try to get it to two weeks. And if there's any way you got a freezer and you can shop and you can get what you need for three weeks, push it to three weeks. That's three weeks you don't have to go to the store and interact with anybody. You know how greatly that reduces your chance of getting infected. It's huge. And wear a mask. Not not only because it'll slightly better improve your chances of not getting it from somebody else, but it'll slightly improve, uh, reduce the chances that you spread it to somebody else in case you have it and are asymptomatic and don't know it. Not medical advice, not a doctor, just a guy who likes to research things. Um, thanks so much for listening today. If you think this will help somebody, share it. Shelter in place. Stay calm. Stay vigilant. Let's get through this, okay? Talk to you next time.